Everyone here is either a self-made millionaire or intends to become one in the future. Everybody loves the subject of becoming wealthy. Now, I'm going to give you seven keys to becoming an outstanding leader in this industry and to becoming one of the highest paid individuals in our society. Becoming wealthy isn't complicated. To become a millionaire, you don't have to completely change yourself. Instead, you need to develop character beyond what 99% of people in the world possess. This includes developing qualities like honesty, discipline, building quality relationships, and having the willingness and ability to work, set priorities, and handle various challenges. Without these qualities, achieving wealth is nearly impossible. The first key is to dream big dreams. Nearly every successful person has cited a turning point in their life when they decided to pursue their dreams vigorously. It's about making a firm decision that you will become wealthy, that you will become a millionaire, and that you're willing to put in the hard work, long hours, and sacrifices required. The turning point is when you make the decision to commit fully to your goal. Now, let's discuss what I call the seven C's. The first C is clarity. Clarity is crucial for success. I've consulted for numerous corporations, both large and small, and I've found that problems often arise when there's a lack of clarity about what the company is doing or how it's doing it. I've developed a program called the Two-Day MBA, which emphasizes the importance of clarity in various aspects of a business. It's essential to be clear about your product, your target customers, your competitive advantages, and your strategies for attracting and retaining customers. The second C is commitment. Success requires unwavering commitment to your goals. You must be willing to work diligently and persistently towards your objectives, no matter the obstacles or setbacks you encounter along the way. The third C is competence. To excel in your field and earn significant wealth, you must continuously strive to improve your skills and expertise. Identify the essential skills needed for success in your industry and dedicate yourself to mastering them. The fourth C is concentration. Focus single-mindedly on your most important tasks and avoid distractions. Concentrate your efforts on high-priority activities that align with your goals. The fifth C is constraints. Identify and address the constraints that are limiting your progress towards your goals. Focus on eliminating or overcoming these obstacles to accelerate your success. The sixth C is continuous learning and development. Dedicate yourself to lifelong learning and personal development. Invest time and effort into expanding your knowledge and skills to stay ahead in your field. The seventh C is courage. Have the courage to take risks, face challenges, and pursue your goals relentlessly. Be willing to step out of your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty in pursuit of your dreams. In summary, by embodying these seven C's, clarity, commitment, competence, concentration, constraints, continuous learning and development, and courage, you can unlock your potential for success and achieve your goals of becoming wealthy. It's not an easy journey, but with dedication and perseverance, you can turn your dreams into reality Here's the corrected version. You'll see, this is why it's so important to have absolute clarity regarding your goals in each area of your life. It's essential for you to be motivated to perform at your very best. An important point to note regarding the ABC formula is that your behaviors are not guaranteed to achieve the consequences you desire. However, every behavior or action you engage in will generate some kind of consequence. One of the most critical aspects of understanding motivation and behavior is realizing that both actions and inactions have consequences. What you do, as well as what you fail to do, will have consequences in your future. Sometimes, these consequences can be dramatic and long-lasting. A beneficial exercise for success is to write a description of the type of person you like to be and the kind of life you like to live. Your most powerful faculty is your ability to think. The more accurately you can think about who you are, what you want to accomplish, and how to accomplish it, the more effective and successful you'll be. The eighth law of success is the law of subconscious activity, which has several applications. The first part of this law states that whatever thought or idea mixed with emotion you hold in your conscious mind will be accepted as a command by your subconscious mind. This means that whatever thought, idea, or goal you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can achieve because your subconscious mind will work to organize all your thoughts and actions to bring it into reality. The second part of the law of subconscious activity is that, once you give it the proper commands, your subconscious mind will trigger your reticular cortex and its function, the reticular activating system. 
Your reticular cortex alerts you to events and circumstances around you that are consistent with your dominant desires or concerns. For example, if you decide you want to buy a red sports car, this desire will signal to your reticular cortex that red sports cars are now of paramount importance to you. From that moment on, you would notice red sports cars everywhere. Your reticular cortex will cause you to be extremely sensitive to opportunities around you that would help you achieve your goals. The third part of the law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind controls your body language and tone of voice. Professor Moravian of the University of California at Santa Barbara concluded that 55% of the message you send when communicating with others is contained in your body language, 38% in your tone of voice, and only 7% in the actual words you use. Your body language and tone of voice are largely controlled by messages about yourself and your goals that you've set to your subconscious mind. For example, when you've had a success of any kind, you send a charge of emotional energy to your subconscious mind that tells it you're a winner. As a result, you walk, talk, act, and think like a winner. The ninth law of success is the law of expectations, often called the law of the self-fulfilling prophecy. It simply states that whatever you expect with confidence tends to materialize in your life. You get not what you want but what you expect with the greatest intensity. For this reason, an attitude of positive self-expansion goes hand in hand with great success in every area of your life. The wonderful thing about the law of expectations is that you have the power to manufacture your own expectations. You can decide to expect only good things to happen to you. You can become convinced that the entire world is conspiring to do you good. The way you apply the law of expectations is by constantly looking for the good in every person in every situation. When you have a temporary setback, you can look for the valuable lesson it might contain. This kind of affirmation causes you to approach everything you do with a more positive, open, and optimistic attitude. The most powerful of all expectations are the expectations you have of yourself. You should approach everything you do with an attitude of calm confidence. The tenth law of success, which applies to many other areas of life, is called the law of concentration. It states that whatever you concentrate on and think about repeatedly with emotion tends to become more and more a part of your inner and outer life. Some of the most important work in psychology shows that if you dwell upon qualities you wish to develop, like courage, sincerity, and persistence, you tend to actually build those qualities brick by brick into your character and personality. The law of success, the law of habit, states that virtually everything you do is automatic and unthinking. You're largely a creature of habit. Good habits are hard to form but easy to live with, while bad habits are easy to form but hard to live with. One of the hardest things to change are bad habits which are counterproductive to the goals you want to achieve. Therefore, it's important to analyze your habits carefully and decide whether they are moving you towards or away from your goals. The twelfth law of success is the law of attraction. It says that you are a living magnet and that you inevitably attract into your life the people, events, and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. The law of attraction has been written about for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. It's often referred to as the law of sympathetic resonance. It explains that if you have a clear goal or idea, you will attract people and resources that can help you realize that goal. Another illustration of the law of attraction is its opposite, the law of repulsion. When you become a particular kind of person because of the way you change your thinking, you will find yourself attracted to people who are similar to you and repelled by those who aren't. The thirteenth law of success is the law of choice, which says that you are always free to choose the content of your conscious mind. Your thoughts control your reality, and since no one else can think for you, the thoughts you choose to harbor determine everything that happens in your life. The fourteenth law of success is the law of optimism, which states that a positive mental attitude goes hand in hand with success and happiness in virtually every dimension of life. The more optimistic you are, the happier you'll be, and the more things you'll be willing to attend. The fifteenth law of success, the law of change, says simply that change is inevitable. Everything is changing, and all progress requires change. Your life can only get better when you get better. If you don't take advantage of change, you will end up being the victim of change. In conclusion, the laws of success are based on the foundation principle that in order to succeed, you must first decide what success means to you. You can then apply these laws to your definition of success to bring it more rapidly into your reality. If I were given only five minutes to speak to you and could convey only one thought that would help you be more successful, 
I would tell you to write down your goals, make plans to achieve them, and work on those plans every single day. This advice, if followed, would be more helpful than anything else you could ever learn. The speed at which you move onward and upward will amaze both yourself and all the people around you. By following these simple and easy to apply methods and techniques, you can quickly move from rags to riches in the months and years ahead. You can transform your experience from poverty and frustration to affluence and satisfaction. You can go far beyond your friends and family and achieve more in life than most other people you know. Welcome, a great new adventure is about to begin. This is a wonderful time to be alive. There have never been more opportunities for creative and determined people to achieve more of their goals than today, regardless of short-term ups and downs in the economy and in your life. When I was 18, I left high school without graduating. My first job was as a dishwasher in the back of a small hotel. From there, I moved on to washing cars and then washing floors with a janitorial service. For the next few years, I drifted and worked at various laboring jobs, earning my living by the sweat of my brow. I worked in sawmills and factories, on farms and ranches, and in the tall timber with a chainsaw and digging wells. When the logging season ended, I worked as a construction laborer on tall buildings and as a seaman on a Norwegian freighter in the North Atlantic. Often, I slept in my car or in cheap rooming houses. When I was 23, I was working as an itinerant farm laborer during the harvest, sleeping on hay in the barn and eating with the farmer's family. I was uneducated, unskilled, and at the end of the harvest, unemployed once more. When I could no longer find a laboring job, I got a job in straight commission sales, cold calling from office to office and from door to door. I would often work all day long to make a single sale so that I could pay for my rooming house and have a place to sleep that night. This was not a great start at life. Then, one day, I took out a piece of paper and wrote down an outrageous goal for myself. To earn $11,000 per month in door-to-door -door and office-to-office -office selling. I folded up the piece of paper, put it away, and never found it again. But 30 days later, my entire life had changed. During that time, I discovered a technique for closing sales that tripled my income from the very first day. Meanwhile, the owner of my company sold out to an entrepreneur who had just moved into town. Exactly 30 days after I had written down my goal, he took me aside and offered me $1,000 per month to head up the sales force and teach the other people what it was that enabled me to be selling so much more than anyone else. I accepted his offer, and from that day forward, my life was never the same. Within 18 months, I had moved from that job to another and then to another. I went from personal selling to becoming a sales manager with people selling for me. I recruited and built a 95-person sales force. I went literally from worrying about my next meal to walking around with a pocket full of $20 bills. I began teaching my salespeople how to write out their goals and how to sell more effectively. In almost no time at all, they doubled and tripled and increased their incomes as much as 10 times. Many of them are today millionaires and multi-millionaires. As a result of inexperience and sometimes sheer stupidity, I have spent or lost everything I made and had to start over again several times. In every case when this happened, I would begin by sitting down with a piece of paper, laying out a new set of goals for myself using the methods that I'll explain in the sessions ahead. After several years of hit and miss goal setting and goal achieving, I finally decided to collect everything I had learned into a single system. By assembling these ideas and strategies in one place, I developed a goal setting methodology and process for the beginning, middle, and end and began to follow it every day. What I found was that these ideas work everywhere for everyone and virtually in every country. No matter what your education, experience, or background may be, when you begin, most of all, these ideas have made it possible for me and many thousands of others to take complete control over our lives. The regular and systematic practice of goal setting has taken us from poverty to prosperity, from frustration to fulfillment, from underachievement to success and satisfaction. This system will do the same for you. What I learned early on is that any plan is better than no plan at all. And it is not necessary to reinvent the wheel. All the answers have already been found. There are hundreds of thousands and even millions of men and women who have started with nothing and achieved great success following these principles. And what others have done, you can do as well if you just learn how. You will find that there are no limits to what you can accomplish except for the limits you place on your own imagination. And since there are no limits to what you can imagine, there are no limits to what you can achieve. All successful people are intensely goal-oriented. 
They know what they want, and they are focused single-mindedly on achieving it every single day. Your ability to set goals is the master skill of success. Goals unlock your positive mind and release ideas and energy for goal attainment. Without goals, you simply drift and flow on the currents of life. But with goals, you fly like an arrow straight and true to your target. One of the great rules for success is this. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. And where you are going is solely determined by yourself and your own thoughts. Everything in your life started as a thought, a wish, a hope, a dream, either in your mind or in the mind of someone else. Your thoughts are creative. Your thoughts form and shape your world and everything that happens to you. Many thousands of successful people have been asked what it is that they think about most of the time. The most common answer given by successful people is that they think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. On the other hand, unsuccessful, unhappy people think and talk about what they don't want most of the time. They talk about their problems and their worries and who is to blame most of the time. But successful people keep their thoughts and conversation on the topics of their most intensely desired goals. They think and talk about what they want most of the time. You have the same goal achieving ability as the homing pigeon, but with one marvelous addition. When you are absolutely clear about your goal, you don't even have to know where it is or how it is to be achieved. By simply deciding exactly what it is you want, you will begin to move unerringly toward your goal, and your goal will start to move unerringly toward you. At exactly the right time and in exactly the right place, you always achieve your goals, whatever they are. You move toward them, and they move toward you. If your goal is to get home at night and watch television, you will almost certainly achieve it. If your goal is to create a wonderful life full of health, happiness, and prosperity, you'll achieve that as well. Nature doesn't care about the size or scope of your goals. If you set little goals, your automatic goal achieving mechanism will enable you to achieve little goals. If you set large goals, this natural capability will enable you to achieve large goals. Here's a good question. If goal setting is automatic, why is it that so few people have clear, written, measurable, time-bound in goals that they work toward each day? I believe there are four reasons why people don't set goals. First, most people don't realize the importance of goals. If you grow up in a home where no one has goals, or you socialize with a group where goals are neither discussed nor valued, you can very easily reach adulthood without knowing that your ability to set and achieve goals will have more of an effect on your life than any other skill. The second reason that people don't have goals is that they don't know how to set them in the first place. Even worse, many people think that they already have goals when, in reality, what they actually have is a series of wishes or dreams. A goal, however, is something distinctly different from a wish. A goal is clear, written, and specific. It can quickly and easily be described to another person. You can measure it, and you know when you have achieved it or not. And, of course, if you never hear about goals until you're an adult, as I experienced, you'll have no idea how important they are to everything you do. They then make the mistake of unconsciously sabotaging themselves by not setting any goals at which they might fail. They end up going through life functioning at far lower levels than are truly possible for them. The fourth reason that people don't set goals is because of the fear of rejection. People are afraid that if they set a goal and are not successful, others will criticize or ridicule them. This is one of the reasons why when you begin to set goals, you should keep your goals confidential. Don't tell anyone. Let them see by your results and achievements what you have accomplished, but don't tell them in advance. What they don't know can't hurt you. The average person starts life traveling through an unmapped and uncharted world with no roadmap. This is the equivalent of starting off in life with no goals and plans. He or she simply figures things out as he or she goes along. Often, 10 or 20 years of work will go past, and the individual is still broke, unhappy in his or her job, dissatisfied with his or her marriage, and making little progress. And still, he or she goes home every night and watches television, wishing and hoping that things would get better. But they seldom do, not by themselves. Earl Nightingale once wrote, Happiness is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal or goal. You only feel truly happy when you are making progress, step by step, toward something that's important to you. Goals give you a sense of meaning and purpose. Goals give you a sense of direction. As you move toward your goals, you feel happier and stronger. More people today fear change and worry about the future than at any other time in our history.
One of the great benefits of goal setting is that goals enable you to control the direction of change in your life. Goals enable you to assure that the changes in your life are largely self-determined and self-directed. Goals enable you to instill meaning and purpose into everything you do. Your greatest responsibility to yourself is to invest whatever time is required to become absolutely clear about exactly what it is you want and how you can best achieve it. The greater clarity you have regarding your true goals, the more of your potential you will unleash for good in your life. The sad fact is that, according to Stanford University, the average person functions with only about 2% of his or her mental potential. The remainder just sits there in reserve, being saved up for some later time. The starting point of all goal attainment is desire. You must develop an intense burning desire for your goals if you really want to achieve them. It is only when your desire becomes intense enough that you will have the energy and the internal drive to overcome all the obstacles that will arise in your path. The great oil billionaire H. L. Hunt was once asked the secret of success. He replied that success requires two things and two things only. First, he said, you must know exactly what it is you want. Most people never make this decision. Second, he said, you must determine the price that you will have to pay to achieve it and then get busy paying that price. Many people make the mistake of thinking that they will pay the price after they've experienced the success. They sit in front of the stove of life and say, first give me some heat, and then I'll put in some wood. Setting goals, working toward them day by day, and ultimately achieving them is the key to happiness in life. Goal setting is so powerful that the very act of thinking about your goals makes you happy, even before you've taken the first step toward achieving them. To unlock and unleash your full potential, you should make a habit of daily goal setting and achieving for the rest of your life. There's no greater guarantee of a long, happy, healthy, and prosperous life than for you to be continually working on being, having, and achieving more and more of the things you really want. Clear goals enable you to release your full potential for personal and professional success. Goals enable you to overcome any obstacle and to make your future unlimited. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, imagine that you have the inborn ability to achieve any goal you can ever set for yourself. What do you really want to be, have, and do? Second, look at your personal life and work today and identify how your own thinking has created your world. What should you, what could you change? Third, determine the price that you will have to pay to achieve the goals that are most important to you, and then get busy paying that price. Music. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to take you on a journey of self-discovery and transformation, a journey that has the power to open your most fulfilled perspective and propel you towards becoming the most powerful version of yourself. In a world filled with endless distractions and demands, it's easy to lose sight of our true potential. We often find ourselves caught up in the whirlwind of daily life, neglecting the incredible power that lies within us. But what if I told you that deep within each and every one of us lies a reservoir of untapped strength, resilience, and greatness waiting to be unleashed? That's right. The key to unlocking your true power lies not in external circumstances or validation from others but in harnessing the power of your own mind and spirit. It's about raising the habits, mindset, and beliefs that empower you to rise above challenges, seize opportunities, and create the life you desire. So, as we embark on this excursion together today, I invite you to open your mind and your heart to the possibility of becoming the most powerful version of yourself. Embrace the journey of self-discovery, commit to personal growth, and watch as you unfold into the magnificent being you were always meant to be. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of personal power. Now, let's start discovering the strategies and principles that will guide us towards releasing our full potential and becoming the most powerful versions of ourselves. You need the courage to continuously move towards your biggest goals and ambitions. You need to be willing to embrace discomfort to grow. You need the courage to leap with faith, without guarantees of success. Brave people are those who have a dream and set a goal, make a plan, and take the first step without ensuring or guaranteeing that their efforts will result in success. However, if you see each step forward as a learning experience and each setback as a valuable lesson that makes you stronger and better, you will not be afraid to leap with faith into the unknown. You need the courage to risk failure, to endure constant setbacks, disappointments, and temporary defeats. You need to learn to deal with failure by realizing that it is an indispensable requirement for success. You cannot succeed without failing, and failing many times.
Remember the wonderful quote from Thomas W. Watson, Sr., the founder of IBM, who said that if you want to succeed faster, you must double your rate of failure. He said that success lies on the other side of failure. You need the courage to treat failure as an opportunity to start smarter, overcoming the fear of failure by doing the things you fear over and over again until the fear disappears and then resolving to bounce back instead of breaking when things don't go as expected. You need the courage to continuously confront danger, to face the things you fear. Identify all the fear-inducing situations in your life that cause you stress or anxiety. Today, decide what could be the worst possible outcome of each of these situations and resolve to accept the worst if it happens and then take action to resolve each of these situations. Refusing to let a situation of fear linger in your life, dominating your thoughts and emotions and holding you back. Requires the courage to be willing to make mistakes and learn from them. All top performers constantly make decisions, make mistakes, learn from them, get up, correct themselves, and continue. Therefore, successful people are not necessarily those who make the right decisions all the time, but by persevering, they make their decisions right. If they make a mistake, they accept it, learn as much as possible, and move on. By failing and making mistakes, you become smarter and are more likely to eventually achieve your goals. You also need the courage to accept complete responsibility for your life, which means taking ownership of the outcomes. You need courage to refuse to make excuses or defend yourself. You need courage to say over and over again, I am responsible. And refuse to blame anyone else when something goes wrong. You focus on the solution rather than the problem or the person. You ask, what do we do from here? What is the next step? What is the solution? What action should we take? Then you get up and move forward, extracting lessons from the situation and discarding the superfluous, the things you cannot change. The last courage you need is the courage to persist. More than anyone else, persistence is the quality that will ultimately guarantee your success. Your willingness to persist through every adversity can be your greatest asset. The ability to persist is the main quality for success in all areas of life. It can be the factor that ensures your success in the end. If you refuse to give up, you must eventually succeed. As in baseball, you will never hit a home run unless you keep swinging. In 30 years of studying successful people, I have discovered one fact time and time again. No one was defeated until they accepted defeat as a reality. No one can defeat you except yourself. Decide what you really want in life, financial independence, and then decide that you will persist until you succeed. You will never give up until you achieve it. Make the decision, close the door behind you, and decide that you will never give up. Failure is not an option. So, overcome procrastination with a very simple method that was developed by W. Clement Stone, who was young and built a fortune of $500 million. This is one of the central principles of his life. Simply, every morning when you wake up, repeat to yourself over and over again, do it now. Do it now. Do it now. When you have the tendency to procrastinate, program your subconscious mind with this automatic condition command. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. The key to overcoming procrastination is to develop a sense of urgency. Be the type of person who gets things done quickly. One way to do this is to break down the task, what's called splicing the salami. Take the task and divide it into small parts, and then do one piece at a time. Say over and over again, do it now, do it now, do it now. Did you know that less than 2% of the population has a sense of urgency? And there's no example of a successful person anywhere who doesn't have a sense of urgency. If you only develop a sense of urgency, that alone will propel you to the top ranks in a very short period of time. In a study conducted among 104 CEOs two years ago, they were asked what qualities would put a person on the fast track in their career. Do you know what the conclusion was? Two qualities. The ability to prioritize, choosing relevant over irrelevant, and the ability to finish work quickly. If all you do is prioritize and finish work quickly, that alone will set you apart from 80 to 90 percent of the people you work with. Delegate everything you can. What does delegating mean? Delegating is very simple. It means that whatever your hourly rate is, let's say your goal is to earn $50,000 a year. If you work 8 hours a day, that's $125 per hour. So, you are a $125 per hour person. The only way to earn $125 per hour is if you do $125 or more worth of work. 
And the only way to do $125 per hour work or more is if you take anything that anyone earning less than you per hour can do. $120, $110, $105, and so on, and delegate it. The general conclusion is that if you can't delegate, if you can't have other people do lower priority things for you, you can't grow, you can't develop, you can't succeed. Delegation requires a keyword, clarity. The reason people don't delegate is that they have delegated and other people have failed. But the main reason people don't carry out the task you've given them is due to lack of clarity. So, when you delegate, here are the keys. First of all, think carefully about what you want done and write it down. Secondly, choose the right person to do it. Don't give an important task to an incapable person. Thirdly, make crystal clear what you want done and when you want it done. And fourthly, check, review, inspect. Stay on top of it to make sure it gets done on time. Never assume that something will be done on time. I read something years ago on a big billboard that said, Assumption is the root of all errors. Never assume that someone or something will be done on time unless you verify it yourself. Step out of your comfort zone. Courage, my friends, lies in stepping boldly into your discomfort zone. That realm where you feel awkward, uncertain, and at times, utterly alone. The comfort zone, I tell you, is the archenemy of human potential. It lulls us into complacency, coaxing us to remain stagnant even when we're dissatisfied with our circumstances. But let me ask you this, is mediocrity truly what you seek? Is a life of average performance what you aspire to? No, I say, set your sights higher. Have a dream of greatness and excellence in every aspect of your life. Identify your goals, chart your course, and commit to mastering each crucial skill along the way. You see, my friends, you may be just one skill away from unlocking the door to unparalleled success in your career. Now, here's a question that has the power to transform your trajectory. What skill, if honed to excellence, would have the greatest positive impact on my career? Consider this question deeply, my friends. Search within your soul, for the answer lies within you. Guidance from mentors, peers, and loved ones, for their insights may illuminate your path. Once you've identified that pivotal skill, my friends, devote yourself wholeheartedly to its mastery. Remember, as the old saying goes, inch by inch, anything is possible. Break down daunting tasks into manageable steps and take action one step at a time. Confucius wisely reminds us, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So, my friends, summon your courage. Embrace discomfort and take that first step towards greatness. The road ahead may be challenging, but with persistence, determination, and dedicated focus, you will rise above adversity and claim the success you deserve. Go forth, my friends, and dare to be great. Your destiny awaits. This is a great strategy for overcoming procrastination and getting more done faster. You can achieve the biggest task of your life by disciplining yourself to take only one step at a time. Your job is to go as far as you can see. Then you will see enough to go further and accomplish a great task. You must take the step with faith and have complete confidence that your next step will soon become clear to you. Remember the wonderful advice. Leap and the net will appear. A great life or a great career is built by doing one task at a time, quickly and well, and then moving on to the next task. Financial independence is achieved by saving a little money each month, year after year. Health and fitness are achieved simply by eating a little less and exercising a little more every day and month after month. You can overcome procrastination and achieve extraordinary things simply by taking the first step, starting towards your goal, and then moving forward, step by step. Now, here's how you can put this idea into action. Select any goal, task, or project in your life where you've been procrastinating and simply take a step towards its completion right away. Sometimes all you need to do to start is to sit down and make a list of all the steps you'll need to take to eventually complete the task. Then just start and complete one item on the list, and then another, and so on. You'll be surprised at what you'll eventually achieve. One of the best ways to overcome procrastination and get more done faster is to have everything you need at hand before you begin. When you're fully prepared, you're like a loaded weapon or an archer with an arrow ready to be shot. You just need a little mental push to start your most valuable tasks. Start by clearing your desk or workspace so that you only have one task in front of you. If necessary, put everything on the floor or on the table behind you. 
Gather all the information, reports, details, papers, and work materials you'll need to complete the job. Have them at hand so you can reach them without getting up or moving around much. Set up your workspace to be comfortable, appealing, and conducive to working for long periods. Make sure especially that you have a comfortable chair that supports your back and allows your feet to rest flat on the floor. The most productive people take the time to create a workspace where they enjoy spending time. The cleaner and neater your workspace is before you start, the easier it will be for you to begin and move forward. When you feel ready to start, assume the body language of high performance. Sit up straight, lean forward from the back of the chair, and act as if you're an efficient, effective, high-performance personality. Then take the first item and tell yourself, let's get to work and dive in. And once you've started, keep going until the job is finished. Start today to plan each day, week, and month in advance. Take a notebook, a sheet of paper, or use your smartphone and make a list of everything you need to do in the next 24 hours. Add to your list as new items come up. Make a list of all your projects, the big, multitasking jobs that are important for your future. Then, organize all your main goals, projects, and tasks by priority, determining what is most important and in what sequence it should be done. What comes first? What comes next? And so on. Start with the end in mind and work backward. Think on paper and always work from a list. You'll be surprised at how much more productive you become and how much easier it is. Apply the 80 20 rule to everything. We always have enough time if we use it correctly. The 80 20 rule, also called the Pareto Principle in honor of the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, is one of the most useful concepts in time management and life. Pareto noticed that people in his society seemed to naturally divide into what he called the vital few, the top 20% in terms of money and influence, and the trivial many, the bottom 80%. Later, he found that virtually all economic activity was subject to this principle. For example, this principle says that 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. 20% of your clients will account for 80% of your sales. 20% of your products or services will account for 80% of your profits. 20% of your tasks will account for 80% of the value of what you do, and so on. This means that if you have a list of 10 things to do, Two of those things will turn out to be worth much more than the other eight put together. Each of the ten tasks may take the same amount of time to complete, but one or two of those tasks will contribute five or ten times the value of any other. Often, a single task may be worth more than the other nine combined. This task is invariably the one you should do first. You can guess which items the average person is most likely to procrastinate on. The sad reality is that most people procrastinate on the top 10 or 20% of items, which are the most valuable and important, the vital few. Instead, they busy themselves with the less important 80%, the trivial many, which contribute very little to results. They focus on activities, not achievements. Often you see people who seem to be busy all day but seem to achieve very little. This is almost always because they're busy working on low-value tasks while procrastinating on one or two activities that, if completed quickly and well, could make a real difference to their companies and their careers. The most valuable tasks you can do each day are usually the most difficult and complex. But the reward for completing these tasks efficiently can be tremendous. For this reason, you must firmly refuse to work on tasks from the bottom 80% while you still have tasks from the top 20% to do. Before starting work, always ask yourself, is this task in the top 20% of my activities or the bottom 80%? Resist the temptation to tackle small things first. Remember that what you choose to do over and over again eventually becomes a habit that's hard to break. If you choose to start your day working on low-value tasks, you'll soon develop the habit of always starting and working on low-value tasks. This is not the kind of habit you want to develop or maintain. Low-value tasks are like rabbits. They multiply continuously, and you never catch up. The hardest part of any important task is starting in the first place. Once you really start working on a valuable task, you'll naturally be motivated to continue. A part of your mind loves being busy working on meaningful tasks that can really make a difference. Your job is to continually feed this part of your mind, motivate yourself. Just thinking about starting and finishing an important task motivates you and helps you overcome inaction. The fact is that the time required to complete an important job is often the same as the time required to do an unimportant job. 
The difference is that you get a tremendous sense of pride and satisfaction from completing something valuable and meaningful. However, when you complete a low-value task using the same amount of time and energy, you get little or no satisfaction. Time management is really life management. Personal management is really about taking control of the sequence of events. Time management is about taking control over what you will do next, and you are always free to choose the task you will do next. Your ability to choose between what is important and what is not important is the key determinant of your success in life and work. If effective and productive people discipline themselves to start with the most important task they have in front of them, they force themselves to do things. Whatever the result, they achieve much more than the average person, and they are much happier. This should be your method of work, too. Use the ABCDE method continuously. The first law of success is concentration, directing all energies to a point and moving directly to that point without looking left or right. William Matthews, the more time you spend planning and prioritizing before you start, the more important things you will do and the faster you will accomplish them. Once you start, the more important and valuable a task is to you, the more likely you are to be motivated to overcome procrastination and dive into the task. The ABCDE method is a powerful prioritization technique that you can use every day. This technique is so simple and effective that it alone can make you one of the most efficient people in your field. The strength of this technique lies in its simplicity. Here's how it works. You start with a list of everything you had to do for the next day. Then you place an A, B, C, D, or E next to each item on your list. Before starting the first task, an A task is defined as something very important, something you must do. This is a task that will have serious positive or negative consequences if you do it or if you don't. If you have more than one a task, prioritize these tasks by writing A1, A2, A3, and so on in front of each item. Your A1 task is your biggest, ugliest task of all. A B task is defined as a task you should do but that has only mild consequences. This means that someone may be unhappy or inconvenienced if you don't do one of these tasks, but it's not as important as an A task. The rule is that you should never do a B task when an A task remains undone. A C task is defined as something that would be nice to do but for which there are no consequences at all, whether you do it or not. These tasks have no effect on your work life. A D task is defined as something you can delegate to someone else. The rule is that you should delegate anything that someone else can do to free up more time for the A tasks that only you can do. An E task is defined as something you can eliminate completely and that will make no real difference. This may be a task that was important at some point but is no longer relevant to you or anyone else. It's often something you continue to do out of habit or because you like it. But every minute you spend on an e-task is time taken away from a task or activity that can really make a difference in your life. After applying the ABCDE method to your list, you'll be completely organized and ready to do important things faster. Take action immediately. The key to making this ABCDE method work is to discipline yourself to start immediately with your A1 task and then continue until it's complete. Use your willpower to start and continue with this work. The most important task you could be doing as we conclude our exploration today, I want to leave you with a powerful reminder. The journey to becoming the most powerful version of yourself is not a destination but a lifelong pursuit. It's about committing to continuous growth, seeing challenges as opportunities for learning, and never settling for anything less than your full potential. Dot. So, my friends, as you go forth from here today, I challenge you to embrace discomfort, summon your courage, and take bold action towards your most cherished goals. Remember, greatness lies not in the absence of fear but in the willingness to face it head on and emerge stronger on the other side. With persistence, determination, and a relentless focus on growth, there's no limit to what you can achieve. The power to transform your life lies within you. It's time to unleash it. Thank you for joining me on this journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Now, go forth and conquer your dreams.